Welcome back to Sunday edition. Now, the IEBC is in all sorts of trouble. And we did see this past week a memo from the chairman of Fuller Chabukati addressed to the Secretariat CEO Ezra Chiloba and uh, what Chabukati having. It was a 12 point uh, document, uh, questions that uh, Chabukati wanted answers to. And some of the things that were highlighted in those 12 points is including the fact that his name, Wafula Chabukati's name, was used to create an account with a password and the same used uh, to access the IBC servers more than 9,000 times. Uh, he wanted to know about that. We also wanted to know about uh, the printing of the ballot papers and the statutory forms uh, by Al Gurel, which was supposed to have security features. This uh, was uh, this formed part of uh, NASA's evidence in the just concluded Supreme Court uh, petition. Uh, Wafola Chabukati wanted to know about that. Another thing he wanted to know about is the GPRS and the geofencing uh, system of the Kenya Integrated Election Management System, KIEMS, which was said to have been switched off from August 5th, uh, switched off, uh, you know, intentionally. Those are just some of the things that did happen. And this must, I was talking to uh, political scientist Barak Muluka on Thursday, and he said that this just means there was no election on the August of, on, on the 8th of August. Do you agree with that? And what do some of these things that are, were highlighted by Wafula Chebukati, whether or not he had a right to do that, being the commission chair or not, but what do these mean for that, uh, you know, election on the, on the 8th of August? Of August? One NASA have indicated. Obviously, NASA was vindicated, so was the Supreme Court. But more important, when you look at the instructions given by Justice Lenaola on behalf of the entire page, there were 12 orders given to IBC, and they needed answers. Those issues have not been answered to date. Right. For some reason, IBC had the energy to ignore court orders. Now, those are the same issues that Chibukati has raised in that memo. And one would have expected if... Um, Chiloba was actually running the show as the head of secretariat, he should have answers to all those questions. And in my view, he should answer all those questions and in the process, leak the same to the media so that we are also able to appreciate the answers he's given. And he should answer all those questions and forward a copy of that to Mr. Kiriako Tobiko, the director of public prosecutions. Because when you look at those questions raised, all of them fall in the space of electoral offenses. Like for instance, why would you want to create a password for the chairman and give it to multiple people so that they've got access around uh, 10 times? I mean, these things are, are, are very clear. And as Esbon had indicated, when the Supreme Court made an order, they found that this election was, uh, or rather they said, everything is null and void. And from a basic understanding of the, of the law, that means, as far as the Supreme Court is concerned, there was no election on August 8th. There was no presidential election on August 8th. There are the secretariat or the commission playing around with cartels, bangled up everything, that you can actually not determine who is the winner. So that when anybody is uh, coming up with numbers around the, place, the presidential elections, you cannot actually confirm who won this election or who lost. Jubilee have got their own numbers. NASA have got their own numbers. Those numbers don't count for anything. The numbers which are supposed to count are the ones which are supposed to come from IBC. And this goes back to a fundamental question, that indeed, if IBC ran an election which was free, fair, and credible, they should have taken the opportunity of the Supreme Court hearing, requested to be given three hours, so that they can in fact demonstrate that everything was free, was fair, and credible, so that NASA is told to go home with cost. They pay the cost of the uh, entire matter. But what did, I, what did IBC do? They, I mean, IBC lawyers couldn't even, uh, were not able to define the difference between a stray vote, a rejected vote. They, 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 they displayed uh, ignorance. Uh, you know, they did not understand the basic issues. All right. That's why All we right. are saying that memo must be answered, and uh, we must have a forensic audit done at IBC. And, and I'm hoping that uh, a clever Kenyan would actually go to court tomorrow 
and uh, compel the DPP to begin uh, investigations on this matter. Because, you know, these are electoral offenses, right, number right. one. And then number two, and we maybe are... an important point, at IBC conducted a free, fair, and credible election, so that when NASA goes to the Supreme Court, their petition is rejected, would have gone now back to business. Right now, the nation is at a suspense. We are going to incur another 13 billion to run a, an election because a few, maybe a few commissioners and a number of uh, staffers, because of errors of either omission or commission, decided to respond to cartel wishes and have thrown us into a dustbin. All right. B Brian, do some of these issues raised in that memo by the chairman of Fula Chibukati uh, hold any water from where you sit? There are some very serious allegations there. You know, I think if Chibukati was wise and to avoid all this uh, throwing of names, he should, have wait, he should have waited for the Supreme Court uh, judgment, read it in full, so that when he say Bukati answer, uh, Chiloba answer this, so and so answer this, he can pinpoint that the judgment said this and this and this is what you did. Uh, that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, the commission uh, has not been able to protect uh, its independence. And uh, that's why they are being told by this side, this side, and they want to consider whatever they are being told. IBC should stand their ground. They are as independent as the Supreme Court. If you can push around Chebukati, you can push around Maraga. Both of them are created in the same constitution and they enjoy the same independence. But they so don't have the we, same you personalities. Cannot, no, 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 you cannot have your cake and eat it. If you have to criticize all of them, we can also ask why is this judge doing ABCD? Why is this judge doing ABCD? Uh, number well, three. Jubilee have been doing that. Very right. Yes, number three, I can say this. Number three is this. This election, I, I concur with the dissenting judges because not every judge agreed with that uh, ruling and they are privy to that uh, ruling themselves. And whatever they pinpoint is the basis of the rejection of the annulment of the election was technology, transmission, mainly transmission. And this is what I have to say. IBC had like more than four parallel systems. They had the key to identify voters. You can always go back to polling station A, polling station B, see how many people uh, participated in voting, number one. Number two, people were given ballot and they cast it in the box. You can always go back and do a count. Number three, uh, p uh, candidates uh, had agents. And I think we should give NASA money in the uh, pay bill number so that they can be able to have agents this time around also. Agents have to come also. They are given their copies, and another copy is stuck uh, outside the polling station. Mm -hmm. You can always come back and check. You can always follow back the trail and check whatever th that was done was verifiable. Even if you write that uh, results at the full scope, and your agent confirm that in this polling station A, candidate A got 17 votes. And uh, you interrogate the content. You see those forms, some of them did not have security features, which to me, it's okay. Because if you do not interrogate the content of those uh, uh, forms and confirm that in polling station, more you have any polling station, is it the, 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 the result that was announced at the polling station, is it the same one in that form, whether it has security features or not? Because we went and cast our uh, ballot. I voted, most of you voted. So you cannot say we did not vote. We voted and we uh, put our paper on the presidential ballot. They're still there. So the last uh, Supreme Court, they did a sampling of some polling station that mm -hmm. uh, the then uh, court had raised. And they did some recount in those areas. It will be, have been wise for this Supreme Court to just sample a few, not just All the right. form, go to this form, it is written, you've gotten this number. Go to that station, confirm if that's the number. You cannot nullify an election on the basis of transmission. All right. Last time, has, transmission has failed at 30%. This right. time, it has already done over 60%. Yes. Only 5 million was in it, and there was a, 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 another mechanism to transmit. It was not uh, mandatory that you transmit electronically. All right, so, Hesbon, what, what, what is your analysis of this memo? Uh, by Fule Chibukati, and uh, uh, Brian is listing some of the things that were supposed to happen from those uh, from those polling stations and all. Another thing is the satellite phones that IBC did uh, purchase for 848 million Kenya shillings were apparently not used. What stands out for you in that memo? I, I think what stands out for me in that memo is the fact that uh, probably uh, the chairman of Fule Chibukati was caught off guard. You know, uh, during the entire process of the Supreme Court ruling, he, uh, uh, he appears to me like somebody who didn't understand the magnitude of the flawed process that was executed by, uh, by, the, by the secretariat, you know. So, I mean, you want to mention so many things about the forms, you know, 
people voted. I don't think the issue is about voting. And uh, the questions that Chebukati is asking are very critical. If you have uh, the GPRS switched off, uh, it is very simple. Ask the, the secretariat, was it a deliberate, was it a mischievous? Because it could be a security issue. So these are questions that I don't think the secretariat can run away from. They need to respond to these things. If you have more than 590 presiding officers, like uh, you know, the memo says, who, did, who deliberately decided not to submit you know, the results, the question is, on whose behest were they acting? You know, and you see, this thing cuts across the board. You can't tell whether those votes were going to favor uh, Honorable Raila Odinga or Uhuru Kenyatta. So some of these questions are so pertinent that Kenyans are waiting for the answers. And I think when my brother here is talking about uh, people voted and the transmission, the question is, when there is uh, an issue of credibility, the best practices around the world, and I can speak as a communication authority, is to tell people the process as it is and what you did. I can tell you for free that before the election, IBC gave us the processes, and I attended a number of workshops. The entire process and those satellites uh, and, and, and scanners that they had at each and every polling session were meant to be used. So there is no way you can tell me that a presiding officer was going to send results via text and not scan and send, because there is a satellite phone where there is no uh, uh, 4G network. So you, you must answer these questions for, for us to get a clear-cut uh, you know, overview of what happened and whether IBC should be trusted to conduct, the, not even IBC, the secretariat, because the back stops with the secretariat. The nitty-gritties of these things looks like they caught the chairman off guard. So I, I mean, from where I see it, it is important that these questions are answered one after another. And just like Dismas says, the CEO does not even have to answer directly to the chair because he can also leak part of the information to the public. Because right. again, this is about the public. But most, most importantly, if this thing was free and fair, the transmission was credible and you want to allay any fears, Access to the server would have done that. But, but Ben, and, and, and the fact that the fact that IBC, either the secretary right, or the up. commission, ben, I, I, did I, I not give us something. access yes. is an indictment of what they did. All right. I, I want ben, to take a very yes, different Mr. angle. And like my all my co-panelists, I don't want to go to the details of that memo, but I want to speak about it. First, I think that was a law, because the question I again will take you back to context. We have 60 days to do a repeat election. The court was very clear that it is IBC that is to do that. So then we start asking ourselves, that being the situation, what should be their focus? And what was the motive, not of writing the letter, but of leaking the letter? Because the question is this. You see, uh, 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 the sailors normally say that uh, boats don't sink because of the storms out there. They only sink when water starts seeping in. And according to me, the leakage of that letter was allowing water to start seeping into the boat. That is also true of the response they got. Because the question is, why do you want to pull the public prematurely into these issues before you tie them and bring them out in an objective way and in a way that they've been owned by the commission? You need to know that there are times to look for public sympathy and public support, and there are times to build public confidence. As at now, their focus, now that we, we are not going to have any other IEBC, right. irrespective of whatever might have happened, they need to focus with the duty ahead, which is to have our next election on the 17th, such that if there are issues, and that's why I said I have no problem with the memo, or the response, but I have a problem with them being leaked to the public prematurely. Right, because you, you are now inviting us into your internal your disputes, issues. Right. yet we are waiting you to come with a All way right. forward on how let's, we are going to conduct our election. So I think that was wrong on both All sides. Right. Let's wrap this up, but I want to ask you, because at the end of the day, the bottom line is the IBC is the one that is mandated with running or conducting an election. Mutinda, in two, 10 seconds only, do you think <laughs> the, that October 17th, 36 days from now is enough time for IBC to prepare an election. You know, these are constitutional timelines. So it is us to adjust accordingly. It's not like we have a choice. It's not like we can make them 61 days. So the thing is, there is no question of whether we are ready or not. Unless we recruited incompetent people into the IBC, right. there should be no excuse whatsoever why we should not hold that election on the 17th. Good response. And as per the law and the constitution. Good answer, Hezbon. I, I think uh, they have no choice. They have to hold it. I think they have what it takes. 
Uh, but bottom line is, uh, they, right now they've put themselves into the public space. We need to see them sort that within the public space. We need to see Chiloba respond to the issues. All we right. need to see Chebukati agree with that. We need to see the political class agree with what they are doing, and the public will go with them. Brian? Uh, I think they'll be able to conduct the election, and that's what we want. And uh, I will also urge them to ignore what my friend is saying and concentrate on their work. They should not... Uh, I don't want to use a bad word, but they should concentrate on uh, <laughs> their work. Given to using bad words. <laughs> they, can, they should concentrate on, the, on their mandate. All right. They have to deliver to Kenyans, so they have to do what it takes. All right. Yes, in, in my view, we need to do a quick audit, a special audit, on uh, what the Supreme Court terms as illegalities and irregularities. Find out the persons who committed those offenses, throw them behind bars, fine-tune the system and deliver a free and fair election. You think but it can be done in, that, in 36 context days? Context is key. The, 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 that's, that's more the than sufficient time. If All you're right. doing a special audit, it will not take more there's than no uh, two days. Right. Thank you. There's Thank no need to audit. Let, you let's get leave there. it there in terms of... <laughs> Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is the biggest... Uh, you know, stakeholders in this election, they are the biggest topic. Kenyans are talking about how they conducted the August 8th general election and whether or not they are ready for another, for the presidential election rerun. They are said to be holding a crisis, uh, some crisis talks to iron out some of those issues and differences. We are keeping a very close eye on that. Meanwhile, the political class already hit the campaign trail. Both NASA and Jubilee have been campaigning. Uh, yesterday, NASA were in Narok. Uh, Jubilee were campaigning in various parts, and of course they had a rally at Uhuru Park. I want us to get into uh, their campaign trails and what are, what, how they have been campaigning. But before we do that, let's get our sound of the week. And it comes from that campaign trail. Here is Ruben Dolos stating some of the things that have been stolen from him by NASA. Alishinda ama alishindwa? Alishinda. Alifanya nini? Alishinda. Sasa wanataka nini? Haja yao ni nini? Nikusumbua watu. Mimi nawaambia kwanza nataka kuambia Supreme Court na Jipukati. Kama ni waizi, kama ni waizi ndugu zangu, hawa manasa ndio waizi. Waliniibia mimi Sio kura peke yake. Wakaiba kila kitu mpaka bibi yangu akanibia. All right, that is the sound of the week. Of course, coming off that campaign trail, uh, NASA and Jubilee have, have been on the campaign trail. Jubilee more uh, you know, having more energy on the campaign trail. Before we get into those, uh, some of the things that have been said on that campaign trail, this must, what is the focus of both sides, both NASA and Jubilee? Where do they focus on as they look ahead to that uh, presidential poll? Well, there, there, there are so many things which uh, come to play, but, but you, are, you are seeing two different uh, approaches from uh, Jubilee and NASA. For NASA, they want to make these uh, a people's campaign. And that's why they want uh, people to contribute as low as uh, 10 bob. And information from uh, the social media suggests that, in fact, it's uh, Jubilee supporters who are assisting NASA by donating up to 5 shillings, 10 shillings to their NASA campaign, yes. which is a statement of uh, goodwill. And the other day, it was very surprising, actually shocking, for Honor Badan Duale to criticize uh, NASA for engaging in uh, public fundraising for, for their cause. And you know, these are best practice all over the world. If you're going to run an, e an election and you don't have enough resources, you ask your supporters to invest in the campaign so that they become uh, shareholders. A good example of that in Nairobi is uh, Bonfest Mwangi. He was able to raise and stand up to 20 million shillings simply because people gave in uh, 10 bob. Right. But again, it brings you to the third world, where, whereby if you're not, uh, you not an incumbent, getting resources for your campaign becomes uh, a nightmare. And I would like to ask uh, Jubilee in future, when they have their fundraising meetings, they also need to take the opportunity to engage in full disclosure of uh, material information and actually tell us who is uh, financing their campaigns and what are their interests uh, in the campaign process. That's what, that's what I've seen as the distinctive uh, features. Then number two, there's a lot of uh, propaganda coming from uh, both sides, uh, mm -hmm. coming from both Jubilee and <coughs> coming from NASA. And if you allow me just to deal with uh, one propaganda issue, 
uh, for for Jubilee that rally yesterday at Uru Park, and Mr. Mbogo has uh, both indicated that uh, the the Jubilee presidential win is so solid because they've got a majority in the National Assembly, in the Senate, and the Council of Governors, and as well as the county assemblies. And if you go by the ruling of the Supreme Court, which says that this election was not uh, very solid, then those numbers do not even uh, make sense. You can look at it from uh, two perspectives. All right. And one would have expected, and, and I'm not sure whether or not it's within their domain, but a big question we should be asking ourselves, is it possible that IBC would have run the other five elections in a manner which is free, fair, and credible, and only bungled the presidential election? Maybe that's a question for uh, another Big day. Big question. Yeah, Big which question, is going yeah. to be determined by the High Court. All but right. looking at the number of uh, petitions, the contrary seems to be the case. Because they are over, according to the, the judiciary, right now we have about 146 petitions. Are those many petitions? I mean, th those, are, those are fairly many petitions. And when you speak to a number of lawyers, they are rubbing their hands with glee, waiting for that judgment, the full judgment from the Supreme Court, to use it as the basis for all their petitions. Of course, they'll, they'll customize it, but they want to use it as a, a ratio decidendi. All right. So that when uh, Jubilee goes to the public domain and says, we, sh we want the presidency because we've got a majority in these other, in these other positions, that is a fallacy which must be disabused. All right. Like, for instance, l let me just use an example because there are some people at home who may want an example. Like, for instance, Mr. Nixon Correal, when, as the MP for Langata, he was a standalone Jubilee candidate, while NASA had multiple candidates. Uh -huh. if, 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 if NASA would have just had one candidate, it would have been very easy for them to be uh, one Jubilee candidate. So there are these fallacies, and I know that uh, Bogwe is waiting to jump into this, but these are the fallacies that we yeah, need that to disabuse people of. Member of Parliament. Su superiority of strategy. All right, you know, know, I want us to get into that. Let, let's let's start with the, the NASA side <laughs> and, uh, and how they have been campaigning uh, the, some of the things they have been campaigning on. Of course, IBC has been uh, a very, uh, you know, common uh, thing on those on both sides. Let's start with the NASA side and what they have been able to say on the campaign trail. <laughs> Kuiba was digital. Lakini kunaswa was manual. Tunaambia huru kinyata. Kabla wewe huja hujaadhibu wale majaji wa Kenya wataadhibu wewe. Some of the NASA principals on the campaign trail, Brian, uh, many pundits seem to think NASA have the momentum following their Supreme Court victory. You know, uh, NASA cannot accept the verdict of nullification and refuse to accept that the court also ordered the same same IBC to conduct election. So whatever they're saying is political side shows, uh, number one. Number two, I think NASA has held only three, four rallies and I think 20 press conferences. Jubilee has had over 30 stopovers and meet the people tour and are having most of defectors coming to Jubilee. So on the matter of momentum, I think the people can see who has the momentum between NASA and Jubilee. All That's right. Hesbon, what do you think? Well, um, I mean, uh, they both have momentum from where I see it. You look at, at Jubilee, they started by going to their strongholds, you know, so there is nothing new about going to your stronghold and having a very big uh, 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 a mammoth uh, uh, crowd, uh, same to NASA. But you may want to ask yourself, in these big rallies that they have, what exactly are they saying? You know, and you get a feel that uh, it's, it's a game of musical chairs. People are not addressing issues. People are attacking other entities, you know. And it, it puts IBC, it puts the political uh, contest in a very precarious position. Because the moment you start supporting what uh, Chebukati is doing as, 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 as a serious participant in this election, you're actually putting the integrity of the entire process into question. Because there is that perception that, you know, you agree with it, 
because it will benefit you. And you attract the other side to also start attacking. So in, in essence, what I'm looking at is that uh, we, we've had enough of the, the Supreme Court ruling, IBC, and so on and so forth. We need to move on. We need to have these two sides of the political divide start campaigning, start addressing Kenyans on issues. They know very well the numbers that they got. And of course, no one can, no one can gloat about numbers because all these numbers are contested. And the, the moment the Supreme Court vacated the presidential election, it brought into doubt even the numbers that we, we know they are claiming to have gotten, including the MPs and the senators. So the, the, the game starts from ground zero. They need to start convincing Kenyans. They need to start looking for those numbers. But because, from my understanding, Kenyans know what Raila stand for. Kenyans know what Uhuru and Ruto stand for. They know their track record. It is important that now Kenyans also chip in and sanitize the political campaign process. I, I would want a situation where we have a presidential winner with 70 plus votes. And I don't think it is about the political class. If we have Kenyans who believe in Uhuru Kenyatta, let them start telling us the reason why they believe in Uhuru Kenyatta and advance these reasons as a way of getting 10, 100, or even 1,000 people vote for him. All right. And if we have Kenyans who believe in Raila, uh, and, and uh, Kalonzo Musioka. We need to have these Kenyans now start speaking confidently, not from the comfort of, 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 of their tribal or political affiliations, but from the reason that they have for supporting either of the two, so that ultimately we have people vote, and then the votes should give us a gulf between the person who wins and the person who is beaten. So much so that if you are beaten, you go home knowing that I fought a good war and I've been beaten, Apparently. All right. Yes, uh, uh, what is yes, Before you do that, something is, this must say that I, I think it would be wrong for me not to respond to the issue of campaign funding. It, it's important to know that the last parliament passed an act to regulate campaign funding, and actually the president signed it into law. Then immediately NASA went to court, and it was suspended. In case they didn't know, I was an aspirant, and I remember at some point we actually were compelled to open an account for funding for campaign funding, but later NASA went to court and stopped that law taking in effect. So before he complains on behalf of NASA, it's important for him to know the fact is that there is a law and it is NASA that went to court to com complain against that. So there is no law? As, as at now, yes. there is no law, but the, the context is that the law was passed by a parliament that had jubilee majority right. and accented to by a jubilee president, meaning that the jubilee did not have a problem with that, but for some reason, NASA went to court. And I, I want to talk about uh, the campaigns. You know, the, the good thing about these campaigns and the reason why I am sure that we are going to win is that uh, we are taking a message out there, and correctly so, that we are under siege. We are under siege. And the only thing that is going to get us out of this siege is for the people coming, voting in their very big numbers like they did in, on the 8th, so that this issue of processes and technicalities is thrown away and the majority have their way. So I believe that what the president and the deputy president is doing is the right thing. They are sending the message that we are the majority, but we are under siege. And the only way to get out of this is to come out in large numbers and uh, confirm that actually on the 8th of August, right. the victory was ours. Let's listen to what those uh, Jubilee leaders have been saying on the campaign trail. President Uru Kenyatta and Deputy President William Ruto have been traversing the country like NASA have been doing, uh, trying to sell their agenda ahead of the presidential election. Choose your independence to do good. That independence has been given to you by the people of Kenya. Serve their interests. We want elections within that 60-day period. We want elections on the date that was announced by the IBC. Wale tunashindana na wao, walipanga njama na mahakama ya kunajizi demokrasia ya Kenya na kuendesha mapinduzi ya uamuzi wa wananchi wa taifa letu la Kenya nataka ni mwadeshe bukati anisikie vizuri sana usilete mchezo na ni kwa kazi ile uongozi tunaongea hapa ni maisha ya wa Kenya wakarudi kutuambia ya kwamba kura ya mwananchi sio hoja kubwa hoja kubwa Ni formu hii, ni formu hile, 
ni fomu hii the supreme court of kenya was used by conmen they conspired through treachery conmanship and deceit to shortchange and subvert and overturn the will of 15 million kenyan Jubilee on the campaign trail, one of the things in their messages from what you can hear from that uh, dismiss, they are still attacking the Supreme Court. What, would you, uh, how, what is your analysis of uh, the Jubilee message? Well, you know that the Supreme Court is a creation of the Constitution. And uh, the framers of the Constitution said we shall have a Supreme Court made up of uh, seven judges. And then they said we should have a presidency made up of uh, the president and his deputy and the people they choose to appoint in their, in their cabinet. So. The Supreme Court is no different from the, from the presidency. The Supreme Court judges do not act on their own motion. They're actually elected by the Kenyans indirectly. Because if you want to become a judge of the Supreme Court, you apply when the Judicial Service Commission, uh, when there's a vacancy, you apply through the Judicial Service Commission, you undergo through a thorough vetting. Your, na your name is taken to the relevant parliamentary committee in the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. It's debated upon. Then the name is put to the entire house. So you are actually indirectly elected. So we are not speaking on your own motion as a Jassiz Maraga or Lenaola or Filomena Mwilu or Smokin Wanjala. You are actually representing the nation. You are, acting on the na you are acting in the interest of the nation. So that when you give an opinion, your opinion is binding. When, uh, in 2013, when the same Supreme Court said that um, President Kenyatta and uh, his deputy have been validly elected, yes. the president and his deputy were, they broke into a dance and song saying, now we have a powerful institution, and this is how we are supposed to make progress. And um, a few years later, when they make a ruling which doesn't favor them, then all of a sudden they are attacking them. They go and back now, to the campaigns. Not wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not Don't that. become nervous. No. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they have a right to express themselves. The what the president. That they what president in accordance with the rules. Wait, wait a minute, you'll have your time. What President Kenyatta and the deputy president are supposed to be doing is to be attacking vigorously the issues and avoid attacking personalities. I mean, how do you start describing a decent gentleman like Maraga or Lenaula or Joaquin Dung or Philomena Mwilu as conmen, as Wakora? What are you doing to that institution? Now, Mbogwa raised a fundamental issue here, that in fact, uh, Jubilee won the presidential election. If in fact they won, one of their prayers should have been to recount all those presidential ballots. How come the lawyers did not so suggest that? responding to petitions. No, no, no. no, no but, 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 but if, if you knew that, if you would have... If NASA won, why did they not you, you play for what you're right, talking right, about? All right, no, no, all right. That's the question, question. Yeah. Why did so, so, so ben, ben, NASA play for that? Questions. But, 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 let, but let me go back. Recount. Yes. Let, let me go back let to me protect, my... Let me go back to my argument. Let me go back to my argument. My understanding of the NASA prayers they said the quality of this process must be inter interrogated. So for them, they went to the qualitative aspect. And for Jubilee, they focused on the quantitative aspect. Now, if you're focusing on the quantitative aspects, then you should have said that in defense of our case, one of our prayers is that bring, bring all the presidential ballots here so that we count them. Now, you cannot start complaining right now that the judges did not make uh, that order when the horse has already bolted. It's not a mistake of NASA. You shouldn't expect that uh, NASA is the one which is going to start asking for prayers that they may jeopardize their case. All right. I let your response to that be your final uh, thought very quickly. Uh, one thing I can tell uh, this is this, and he has put it correctly. We have three arms of uh, government. Yes. We always criticize the executive. We always criticize the legislature. Supreme courts are not gods. Exactly. We can. All, in fact, they are the only people who are not elected by the people directly. Exactly. So, in fact, the interrogation should be more vigorous than even our member of parliament because at least we have a chance of sending them home uh, every five years. So, we should interrogate every arm of government freely. But not number attacking two, personalities. Number, uh, attack the you know, you, 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 the the you know the, we have a freedom of everything. Exactly. So you cannot it's police me. Law, you cannot offended. police me on how I should tackle issues. The All same right. way, best fit is uh, that way. Number two, there are only four outcomes in this. Raila Odinga wins this election. We vindicate uh, the Supreme Court and himself. Two, Uhuru Kenyatta wins this election. Uh, we vindicate uh, Jubilee and IABC. Three, Raila Odinga lose uh, with a small virgin. We still uh, vindicate uh, Supreme Court and Raila Odinga. 
those are the only uh, scenarios that we have right now. All right. So right now, that memo cannot vindicate uh, Supreme Court and uh, NASA. All right. On the 17th of August, that's when vindication will be done. Fair enough. And that's Hezbo. where we will criticize the Supreme Court mostly after right. our win. Okay. Yeah. Your I, final thoughts, Hasbro? I think we need to understand things and make things clear and in context. Uh, that the fact that people are elected and others are appointed does not mean that the ones who are elected have more clout. You look at the appointment of the Supreme Court judges, they went through parliament. And Kenyans vetted these Supreme Court judges through their representatives. So you cannot have a threshold that because we elected MPs directly, they have more clout. Supreme Court judges are as important as any other constitutional office holder, and they're enshrined in law. It is very clear that you can, you can criticize the judgment, but there is no uh, acceptable norm of criticizing individuals, you know, collectively. But you can it criticize doesn't, President yes, yes, it, an individual. It doesn't, uh, you, you know, there is, there, is, there is a difference, and I think my, my friend here does not understand. There is a difference between criticize and critique. So mm -hmm. we can critique anything. And by critiquing, you're evaluating the veracity of how good it is in the interest of the public. You don't start abusing. And it is also important to note that before the, 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 the NASA principles went to court, I think everyone was uh, telling them, go to court. They went and the Supreme Court made a ruling. And I think we need to move beyond that. Now that we are faced with an election, it is very important that these two sides of the political divide go out and look for votes. From the Jubilee side, the argument is they won. But the perception that they are doing, they, they are making outside there, and it has been underscored by Kavemba here, is that they are under siege. Why are you under siege if you have numbers? If they indeed won and they right. believe that they had numbers, let them go and look for those numbers. Because now, NASA did not do that. NASA, NASA, did, not, NASA, did, do not NASA did not That's make a prayer to have Raila declared the president. They made a prayer because they believe in the due process of the law, that they won whoever wins wins quantitatively, and the qualitative aspects anchor that win. You cannot win an election that is in doubt and remain comfortable. So we need to focus on the process. It doesn't matter who wins the next right. election. It is not a question Thank of you. vindication. Yes. But if you win, you must win it in a way that even the loser and the Kenyans accept that you actually won. Just Thank only you. two Thank points. You. I want to support... Thank you. I want to Your support final thoughts. Yes. yes. Two points. I want to support yes. Brian first on something that he said. That... Uh, the, the, that those who've been de directly elected have got more power than those who've been appointed. It is a fact. And that is why the Constitution goes out of its way to explain the state protocol. The president is in charge. The deputy president comes number two. In the unlikely event that for some reason both of them are not there, the speaker of the National Assembly is number three. That is expressly provided for in the constitution. There is a reason for the, it. The speaker that we have that. now was not elected by Kenyans. But he was elected he's serving in, in an... Let me tell you, listen, it is the same logic. These are oversighted by parliament. No, 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 I want to... No, 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 You're shooting yourself on the foot. No, 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 What is the question here? Did you hear what argument? No, 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 no. You're trashing your constitutional office. No, I am not trashing. What I said is this. He explained very well. Check the case for Baraza and the MPs who have cases. No, why was it, why, why, even why without was she that, fired? All right. what, on, on, on what basis do you level. think? On what basis do you think the constitution provided for this hierarchy? That the president, the, the number one is the president, number two is the deputy president, and in an event that both of them are not there, in the likely event, then the speaker of the next, what do an you election. think yes. guided that thinking? It's okay, I'll respond. All right. uh, no, what, so what? that is what I'm no, trying to say. To so you know, the speaker of the national assembly, point, you know, yes. the president is expressly, directly elected by the population. All right. The Speaker of the National Assembly is elected by members who have right. directly right. been elected. It is on that basis that the protocol follows the route that it follows. Then my last point is this, about the argument that uh, is, uh, this mass is given about quantitative and qualitative. You know, in law, you use that which can support your arguments. And the main reason and the only reason they did not go quantitative is because they were certain they will lose if they go that way. Because the quantitative arguments they, were favoring jubilee, jubilee. So they chose the qualitative. What cool. better? The best what better? All exactly. right, let's, let's leave it there. Thank exactly. you, gentlemen. It's always a good uh, <laughs> uh, uh, sign when the conversation is not ending. Thank you so much for coming into this morning to give us your perspective. Thank you. Dismas Smokua, uh, Bran Bogwa, Hezbon Owila, and Mutinda Kavemba. Uh, joining us on the show this morning. Remember, every Sunday uh, morning, mid-morning, 
Uh, at that, uh, the time has changed when we'll be on air, not from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, but uh, from today, the show will be coming to you every Sunday mid-morning from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Also, we leave it on the program this morning. Thank you for joining us. Let's uh, keep the conversation on going online. Uh, Twitter is exploding. A lot of feedback on uh, what we have been discussing. Of course, the main points, the focus on the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IBC, as they continue to prepare for the presidential election repeat on the 17th of October. I am Ben Kitili. See you next Sunday, same time, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll leave you with our Siasa files, retired president, Mwaiki Baki. Then why, 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 Kwanini, Ueze, Una Yuati Kazi, Yuina Saitajika, Una Yua Faida Hio, Sana, Bas, Uta Kuaji Sasa, Uyako, Kikutana Kesha Kutua, when I can be with Sahau, Ita Kuriza, Azimani Kurize. Nikuulize <laughs> 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 No, 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 Lakini kama hamujafanya ispokuwa yaya tulitaja, ah, jamani nitasema yule aliahidi kwamba watafanya.